the expensive lie on your wrist. Look at your wrist right now. Whether you're wearing a Garmin, an Apple Watch, a Sunto, or a Coros, it doesn't matter the brand, and it doesn't matter if you paid $300 or $900 for it. That piece of technology that you trust with your life is, at this very moment, lying to you. And the worst part? You are basing your entire training philosophy, your sweat, your early mornings, and your race goals on that lie. Consider this scenario. You head out for your morning easy run. You glance at your watch. It says you are in zone two. You feel okay. You tell yourself, great, I'm burning fat. I'm building my aerobic base. I'm doing everything right. But in reality, inside your body, a completely different story is unfolding. Your physiology isn't burning fat. It's burning glycogen. You aren't building endurance. You are accumulating lactate. You aren't recovering. You are stressing your autonomic nervous system. You think you are training for endurance, but biochemically, you are training for fatigue. Why is this happening? Is the sensor broken? No. The problem is that 99% of these watches, straight out of the factory, use a mathematical formula from the 1970s that has been proven scientifically inaccurate for the vast majority of the human population. The infamous 220 minus age formula. If you are 40 years old, your watch arbitrarily assumes your maximum heart rate is 180. It doesn't ask questions. It just sets your zones based on that number. It doesn't know your athletic history. It doesn't know the size of your heart's left ventricle. It doesn't know your hematocrit levels. It doesn't know if you are an elite marathoner or if you just stood up from the couch yesterday after 10 years of inactivity. In this video, we are going to delete the factory settings. I am going to give you the exact scientific method, specifically the Carvenin formula and the LTHR field test to find your true zones. Because if your zones are wrong, every kilometer you run is a step towards stagnation, burnout, and injury. If you want to stop guessing and start actually training, stay until the very end. Why 220 minus age is garbage. Let's start by dismantling the biggest myth in the fitness industry. The formula, 220 minus age equals maximum heart rate HR max. This formula did not come from extensive research on endurance runners. It was a rough statistical observation made decades ago for patients with heart disease. The reality is that maximum heart rate is a genetic trait. It is largely determined by the size of your heart and the firing rate of your sinoatrial node. It is like your height or your eye color. It does not decline linearly with age for everyone in the same way. I could have two 30-year-old athletes standing in my office right now. Athlete A might have a genetic max HR of 175. Athlete B might have a genetic max HR of 205. Both are perfectly healthy, but if I train athlete B using athlete A's zones, I will force him to run at a snail's pace. He will think he is doing a recovery run, but his watch will scream that he is in zone three or zone four. He will feel like a failure when in reality his data inputs are simply wrong. However, the biggest problem isn't just the ceiling, max heart rate. The biggest problem is the floor. Standard watches completely ignore your resting heart rate, RHR. Let's use logic for a second. Imagine a 40-year-old sedentary individual who smokes and has a resting heart rate of 80 beats per minute. Now imagine a 40-year-old competitive marathon runner with a athlete's heart and a resting heart rate of 45 beats per minute. According to the 220 minus age formula, both of them have the same max HR, 180. Therefore, the watch calculates that both of them should run their easy run at 130 beats per minute. This is biologically ridiculous. For the marathon runner, 130 beats per minute is a warm-up. He is barely sweating. For the sedentary person, 130 beats per minute might be a moderate to hard effort, pushing him close to his aerobic threshold. If you do not account for the floor, resting HR in the equation, you are ignoring the most significant indicator of your current fitness level. And this leads us directly into the black hole of training. The trap of the gray zone, junk miles. What happens when your watch zones are set incorrectly? You fall into the gray zone. The gray zone is usually what I call the fake zone three. 
It is that specific pace where you feel like you are working. You sweat. You breathe a little heavier. It feels gratifying. You can hold it for 45 or 50 minutes. When you finish, you look at your stats and think, I had a good workout today. I pushed myself. The hard truth? Training-wise, you accomplished nothing. You ran too fast to elicit the benefits of zone two. You didn't maximize mitochondrial biogenesis. You didn't teach your body to oxidize fat as a primary fuel source. You didn't increase capillary density efficiently. You were burning sugar. Simultaneously, you ran too slow to elicit the benefits of zone four or five. You didn't improve your VO2 max. You didn't push your lactate threshold up. You didn't force your body to become efficient at clearing lactate. So what did you do? You simply fatigued your body. You created metabolic waste, reactive oxygen species. You stressed your adrenal glands, spiking cortisol unnecessarily. You accumulated mechanical stress on your joints, but you gave your muscles no clear adaptation signal. These are what we call junk miles. And then you wonder, why has my 10K time been stuck at 50 minutes for two years, even though I run four times a week? You are stuck because you are constantly training in the middle, in mediocrity. To break through a plateau, you must polarize your training. Your easy days must be embarrassingly easy. Your hard days must be brutally hard. And to do that, we need to fix the numbers right now. The solution, part one, the carbon and formula. Before we get to the advanced field test, there is a way to fix 80% of this problem in less than three minutes without leaving your house. You just need a calculator or your phone. We are going to use the heart rate reserve, HRR method, also known as the Carvonen formula. Step one, find your true resting heart rate. Do not look at your watch right now while you are drinking coffee or watching this video. Look at the average RHR your watch recorded while you were sleeping last night, or measure it manually the second you wake up in the morning before your feet hit the floor. Let's assume for this example that your resting HR is 50 beats per minute. Step two, estimate your maximum heart rate. If you haven't done a clinical VO2 max test, check your watch history. What is the highest number you have ever seen at the end of a 5K race where you sprinted to the finish line or during a hill repeat session where you thought you were going to die? Let's assume you saw 185 beats per minute. This observed max is infinitely more reliable than 220 minus age. Step three, calculate the reserve. Subtract the resting from the maximum. 185 max minus 50 rest equals 135. This 135 is your heart rate reserve. This is the specific engine capacity you have available to use during exercise. Step four, the calculation. Now we don't just take percentages of the max. We take percentages of the reserve and then ADD the resting HR back in. The formula is target HR equals reserve times percentage plus resting HR. Let's find the famous zone two, which is typically 60% to 70% of your effort. Lower limit, 60%, 135 times 0 0.60 plus 50 equals 81 plus 50 equals 131 beats per minute. Upper limit, 70%. 135 times 0 0.70 plus 50 equals 94.5 plus 50 equals 145 beats per minute. So your scientifically calculated zone two is 131 to 145 beats per minute. Now, pay attention to the difference. If you use the standard factory method, simple percentage of max 185, 70% would be 129 beats per minute. Do you see the problem? With the old method, your watch would be screaming at you to slow down at 130 beats per minute. It would be telling you that you are training too hard. In reality, based on your fitness reserve, you have room to push up to 145 beats per minute and still be in the fat burning zone. You have been forcing yourself to run awkwardly slow, ruining your running mechanics and feeling miserable for absolutely no physiological reason. Go right now into your Garmin settings. User profile, heart rate and power zones. Heart rate, zones based on. Change it from percent max HR to percent HRR, heart rate reserve. 
Input your correct resting HR. You will see that suddenly your zones make sense. Your training will feel aligned with your effort. The solution part two, the LTHR field test for the serious. The Carvonin method we just covered is excellent and will cover 90% of runners. It is perfect for health and finishing your first few races. However, if you are watching this because you want to break records, if you want surgical precision, if you want to train like an elite athlete, you need to base your zones on your lactate threshold, LT2. What is the threshold? It is the biological tipping point. It is the specific heart rate where your body begins to produce lactate faster than it can clear it. It is the red line. If you know your heart rate at threshold, LTHR, you can anchor all your training zones around this pivotal number with absolute precision. How do we find it without going to a lab and getting our fingers pricked for blood? We use Joe Frill's 30-minute field test. Warning, this test hurts. It is mentally and physically demanding. Do not attempt this if you are a complete beginner or have any underlying health issues. The protocol one, warm up. Run easy for 15 minutes. Do four to five strides, short accelerations to wake up the legs and heart. Two, the main set. You will run for 30 minutes exactly alone, on a flat road or a track. The goal, you must run at the maximum sustained effort you can hold steady for 30 minutes. Strategy, do not sprint the first five minutes and die. Do not start slow and sprint the end. You need to be on the limit of comfortably hard the entire time. You should finish feeling like you couldn't run another 100 meters at that pace. 3. The measurement. At 10 minutes into the effort, press the LAP button on your watch. At 30 minutes, the finish, press stop. The result, look at the average heart rate of that specific 20-minute lap, the last 20 minutes of the run. This number is, with an accuracy of plus or minus 2 beats, your lactate threshold heart rate, LTHR. Let's say your average was 172 beats per minute. Now go into your watch settings, select zones based on percent of LTHR and input 172. What happens now is magic. Your zone four threshold starts exactly under 172. Your zone five VO2 max is everything above 172. Your zone two is typically calculated as 80 to 85% of that 172. Now you're not guessing. You know, you know that if you are running a tempo run at 168 beats per minute, you are safe. You are improving your threshold without breaking it. You know that if you drift up to 174 beats per minute, you are on borrowed time and the clock is ticking before your muscles fail. This is the tool that allows you to execute a perfect negative split and destroy your personal best. The meaning of each zone why we do this. Now that you have fixed the numbers, you need to understand what they mean biologically. These aren't just colors on a screen. They are different energy systems. Zone one and two, the base. Here you are training your mitochondria. You are teaching your body to be a fat burning machine. You are increasing the density of capillaries, the tiny blood vessels that deliver oxygen to muscles. You should be spending 80% of your total weekly volume here. If your zones were wrong before and you were running slightly too fast, you were bypassing fat oxidation entirely. You were emptying your glycogen stores on easy days, leaving you empty for the hard days. Zone three, the gray zone, as we discussed, we generally avoid this for general fitness. However, for advanced marathoners, this is race pace. We use it specifically and intentionally within long runs to simulate race fatigue, but never randomly. Zone four, threshold. Here, we increase our tolerance to lactate. This zone hurts, but it is a manageable hurt. It's the comfortably hard sensation. This is where you become a faster endurance runner. This is where you build the engine for a sub 40 10,000 or a sub 130 half marathon. Zone 5, VO2. Max, this is pure horsepower. 
The heart is working at maximum capacity. We visit this zone for short intervals, two to five minutes, to raise our genetic ceiling. It is very stressful, so we use it sparingly. If you don't clearly separate zone two from zone four, you are essentially making training soup. All your runs look the same, they feel the same, and your body stops improving because it gets bored of the same mediocre stimulus. Beyond the numbers, the exclusive membership. I know that all these numbers, the Kervonen formulas, and the LTHR test might seem like a mountain of information. And the truth is, data alone is not the solution. The interpretation of data is the solution. Knowing your heart rate zones is just the first step. Knowing what to eat to fuel those specific zones. Knowing how to optimize your sleep architecture to lower your resting heart rate. Knowing how to read your blood work to see if your body is absorbing the training load. That is the next level. In my exclusive membership channel, we don't just stop at running mechanics. We dive deep into the total biology of the athlete. We discuss how to analyze blood biomarkers. We discuss how stress impacts your hormonal profile. Testosterone for men, cycle for women. We discuss lifestyle optimization strategies that complement your training. There, we have the time and the space to analyze topics that simply do not fit into a standard YouTube video. If you are interested in learning how the machine works and not just how to steer it, the access link is in the description. I'll see you there. But let's return to your watch and your run tomorrow. Today, I gave you the knowledge to stop running blind. I gave you the method to turn the gadget on your wrist from an expensive toy into a precise scientific instrument. Here's my challenge to you. Do not go for a run tomorrow unless you have fixed your zones. Sit down, take your phone out and do the math. Find your resting heart rate. Calculate your reserve. Or if you feel ready and strong, go out and execute the 30 minute LTHR test. Once you lock in the correct numbers, you will see that running changes. Your easy runs will finally feel truly enjoyable, guilt-free and restorative. And your hard runs will feel truly explosive and purposeful. Now, if all of this sounds too complex, if you are afraid you might miscalculate, or if you simply don't know how to take these numbers and build a weekly plan that leads to a personal best, then perhaps you need someone to do the math for you. As a coach, my job isn't just to write kilometers in an Excel sheet. My job is to analyze your data, to watch how your heart responds to stress, and to adapt the plan to your specific physiology week by week. If you want to join my team and train based on science, not luck, my contact details are in the pinned comment. Send me a message and let's discover your true potential. Happy training in the right zone. Your running journey powered by science.